You are looking live at Launch Pad 6 at Site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, where a Soyuz 2.1A booster stands fully fueled, ready for launch, to send an American astronaut, Laurel O'Hara, and two Roscosmos cosmonauts, Oleg Kononenko and Nikolai Chub, on a quick two-orbit journey to reach their destination, the International Space Station. Good morning from Mission Control here in Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Johnson Space Center. Countdown clocks are ticking backward for the launch of the Soyuz MS-24 spacecraft atop its Soyuz booster at 10.44 and 35 seconds a.m. Central Time, 11.44 a.m. Eastern Time, 8.44 p.m. Baikonur Time, about an hour and 23 minutes after sunset at the launch site. It's a perfect night for launch in Baikonur, 68 degrees Fahrenheit and clear skies for the start of the flight of Kononenko, Chub, and O'Hara to the International Space Station. Earlier today, the Soyuz booster was fueled for launch by engineers in Baikonur, a process that was completed a few hours ago. The launch control team in Baikonur reports that all systems are go for launch, no issues being worked as the countdown enters its final phase. The crew boarded the Soyuz about an hour and 45 minutes ago, strapped into uh, their seats in the descent module of the Soyuz spacecraft, conducted leak checks of their uh, Soka launch and entry suits, and everything is in great shape as the countdown is now at 57 minutes and 40 seconds and counting for the launch of this next trio of residents to the International Space Station. The Soyuz MS-24 call sign, by the way, that you'll be hearing uh, through an interpreter as conversations are held between uh, the blockhouse in Baikonur and mission control outside of Moscow to uh, Kononenko, the Soyuz commander. The call sign for MS-24 is Antares. Here in mission control in Houston, the team is watching over the Expedition 69 crew and station systems on the International Space Station, preparing to support the arrival of Soyuz MS-24 later today. That station population will increase from 7 to 10 with the addition of NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara and uh, her so Soyuz uh, crewmates, Ali Kononenko and Nikolai Chub. The crew is all set to begin a flight of a just over three hours in duration to the International Space Station with docking scheduled at 1.56 p.m. Central Time this afternoon. Okay, the Soyuz will be docking to the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Once the hatches are open between the newly arrived Soyuz and the station, the new residents will be greeted by Station Commander Sergei Prokopiev of Roscosmos and his Roscosmos crewmates Dmitry Patelin and Konstantin Borisov, along with NASA astronauts Frank Rubio and Jasmine Mugbelli, European Space Agency astronaut Andy Mogensen, and Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Satoshi Furukawa. Mogensen will take over as Expedition 70 commander during a change of command ceremony on September 26th, before Prokopiev, Patelin, and Rubio depart in their Soyuz MS-23 spacecraft the following day, heading for a parachute-assisted landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan. Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin are in the home stretch of a mission that will have spanned 371 days, which for Rubio marks the longest single space flight by an American astronaut. This past Monday, Rubio broke the former record for the longest single space flight by an American, 355 days, previously held by Mark Bandehai. Laurel O'Hara today becomes the first American to launch on a Soyuz spacecraft since Rubio did so in September of 2022. O'Hara's flight on Soyuz mirrors that of Roscosmos cosmonaut Konstantin Borisov, who launched to the station as part of the SpaceX Dragon Crew-7 crew on August 26th, providing a reciprocal crew exchange capability to maintain safe and continuous space station operations. The uh, music that you're hearing is being piped to the crew aboard uh, the Soyuz spacecraft. This is a traditional way of uh, having the crew relax a bit during the final hour or so of their countdown before launch. Back here in Mission Control, the Orbit 2 team of flight controllers is on console at this hour. Uh, they uh, 
are involved in uh, watching over the station systems, uh, checking everything out, uh, making sure that the station is in the right configuration to accept the Soyuz spacecraft later today with docking scheduled again at 1.56 p.m. Central Time this afternoon. Uh, the two flight directors who are on console today are Chris Dobbins and Ronak Dave. Uh, they are joined by spacecraft communicator Jessica Mir, a uh, veteran astronaut, no stranger to Soyuz operations, having launched almost four years ago to the day on Soyuz MS-15 in September of 2019. Again, you're looking now live again with a view of the Soyuz MS-24 on the launch pad at Baikonur. Liftoff scheduled just 53 minutes, 45 seconds from now at 8.44 p.m. Uh, Baikonur time. That's 10.44 a.m. Central Time this morning. The countdown is proceeding on schedule with no issues being reported from the engineers at the blockhouse in Baikonur. Atop the Soyuz 2.1A booster strapped into their seats in the descent module of the Soyuz, NASA's Laurel O'Hara and Oleg Kononenko along with Nikolai Chub of Roscosmos. Kononenko, the Soyuz commander, is in the center seat of the descent module, flanked to his left by Chub, serving as board engineer number one. To Kononenko's right, NASA's Laurel O'Hara serving as board engineer number two. For O'Hara and Chub, this will be their first flight into space. For Kononenko, his fifth flight into space. Kononenko and Chub are embarking today on a one-year mission aboard the International Space Station. They will return to Earth next September with NASA's Tracy Dyson, who acted as O'Hara's backup during the past several weeks of training down in Baikonur, and who is launching next spring on Soyuz MS-25 with Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Novitsky and a Belarus researcher, Marina Vasilevskaya, who will be flying as a spaceflight participant on a so-called taxi flight. O'Hara will land on Soyuz MS-25 with Novitsky and Vasilevskaya. And as a note of interest, Kononenko, who is the chief of Roscosmos' cosmonaut corps, currently ranks sixth on the all-time list of most days in space by a human. By the time he completes his mission a year from now, he will have jumped to the top of the list with more than a thousand days in space. Right now, the countdown is inside the 52-minute mark, 51 minutes, 50 seconds in counting for the launch of the Soyuz MS-24 crew to the International Space Station. With everything uh, proceeding in good shape toward launch, let's take a few moments to learn more about Laurel O'Hara and her road to becoming an astronaut. I've wanted to explore ever since I was a little kid, and I'm not totally sure where that came from. I've just always been really curious and interested in other places. And so from a pretty young age, I just wanted to be an explorer. And I grew up in Houston, so NASA was right down the road. And we got to come to JSC a lot um, on school field trips, and then also when I was in second grade, we grew some tomato seeds that had flown on Space Shuttle. So we got to do the Tomato Seeds in Space program. Just that early exposure to NASA, I think, focused me on an astronaut as being one way to be an explorer. And that dream kind of persisted all the way through school and college. So I graduated from undergrad and then worked for a year and a half and then went back to grad school for two years. And I did all of that in aerospace engineering. And my sister was a geologist at Penn State, also in grad school at the time. And her research was in Iceland studying the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and the fault lines that run through Iceland. And that sounded really fun and kind of like what I had dreamed about in exploration. And so I started looking around for different opportunities and found Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. Um, and that's how I moved into ocean science. Woods Hole does kind of the broad suite of earth and ocean science. They do everything from biology, chemistry, geosciences, and then they also have a pretty big engineering department. And so I joined the engineering department. When I started at Woods Hole, I started on an upgrade to the Alvin submersible. So it's the United States only manned research submersible and the oldest sub in the world that does that kind of work. And at the time we were doing the first of a two-part upgrade to the sub. 
to do a lot of different upgrades, but mainly to increase the operating depth of the sub from 4,500 meters to 6,500 meters. But one of the things I was responsible for was the main vehicle frame, the overall kind of skeleton of Alvin that attaches the personnel sphere, like where the people are. So it was this huge seven foot diameter titanium sphere with all these lugs welded onto it. And the main vehicle frame was also uh, this welded structure. And then these two parts showed up to Woods Hole separately. And one day we had to mate them. And so seeing the sphere come down onto the vehicle frame, and making sure every bolt went through every lug uh, was a pretty great day. This is the kind of work I wanna be doing. It's really hands-on. Um, it's working with a lot of different people from around the world, working on science that helps us understand the planet better. And so I started to think that maybe I would stay there for a while. I went all the way through with the Alvin upgrade. And one of the things that I really was hoping to do was to get to dive in Alvin one time. And I did get to do that on sea trials. It was neat to see the vehicle, you know, in action, and I got to fly it for a little bit, uh, which was really fun. In addition to my work on Alvin, I also did a lot of work with uh, robots. Um, so either remotely operated vehicles uh, that were driven from the ship or autonomous vehicles that you know, had their own brain on board. My work with all of these vehicles were mostly at sea and we would go out on research cruises that were anywhere from two or three weeks to a month or two. So Jason is the name of the vehicle that I did most of my work with, and it's an ROV, so it's a remotely operated vehicle. And we lower it over the side of the ship, um, and it stays tethered to the ship. So uh, there's a tether that's providing electrical power and communications to the vehicle. And then the pilot sits on board in a control room and drives the vehicle from the control room. We have a pilot, we have an engineer and a navigator. And so I would sit engineer and navigator in the control room and then also work as a mechanic on the vehicle and as a data processor. A lot of the work that we did with those vehicles was around hydrothermal vents. And so you would see, they call them black smokers. And so they're kind of like chimneys with black smoke spewing out underwater and just this wealth of animal life that lives around them. And so they were just these really beautiful spots on the seafloor that we got to go visit. Those cruises were sort of like the highlight of my career. And I love the research cruises because I think for the same reason that I really enjoy the work here. And that's just going out on a ship with a relatively small group of people and a pretty focused mission and having to use, you know, whatever we have out on the ship to solve problems and fix things when they break. And you just kind of develop a really nice team dynamic out there. And the work is really fun and interesting. Most of what we were doing was science aimed at understanding the oceans better. And so the overall mission was really great. And similarly at NASA, our mission is to explore, both to inspire people on Earth to develop new technology and to take humans further and further in the solar system. And so uh, working on things like that that have a worldwide impact and that are ultimately for the greater good, I think is really sort of the overarching thing that draws me to exploration. I'm Laurel O'Hara and I'm a NASA astronaut. A look at NASA's Laurel O'Hara, who in a few hours uh, will take up residency for the next six months on the International Space Station. If you're just joining us, you're looking live at Site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in the Central Asian Desert in Kazakhstan, where we are 45 minutes, 14 seconds away from the launch of O'Hara, Oleg Kononenko, and Nikolai Chub to the International Space Station. The crew flew to the Baikonur Cosmodrome from their training base at Star City, Russia on August 29th for final pre-launch training and inspections of their Soyuz spacecraft. While that was ongoing, the MS-24 spacecraft was encapsulated into the upper stage of the Soyuz booster in the integration building late last week. After the three stages of the Soyuz booster were mated together, the Soyuz rocket began its trek to the launch pad shortly after sunrise on Tuesday hauled to the pad horizontally on a rail car 
in a process that took about 30 minutes to complete. Once at the pad, the Soyuz was raised hydraulically to its vertical position for final pre-launch preparations as engineers hooked up electrical and fuel lines to complete the vehicle's testing. And we continue to watch the countdown clocks tick backward for the launch of this next crew to the International Space Station approaching the T-minus 44-minute mark. Out on launch pad uh, 6 at Site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome that you can see there in your view, the Soyuz booster poised for launch, fully fueled with kerosene and liquid oxygen as the propellant. The Soyuz 2.1A is the ticket to ride for crews that launch to the International Space Station from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Let's take a moment to take a closer look at the Soyuz booster. The Soyuz rocket stands 162 feet tall, weighs about 640,000 pounds, and consists of the Soyuz spacecraft inside a protective shroud at the top and the three-stage Soyuz 2.1A booster below. The first stage has four liquid engines strapped to the side of the core vehicle. Each will burn for one minute and 58 seconds before they drop away. The core engine of the first stage also serves as the second stage and continues to burn until 4 minutes and 57 seconds into the flight. The third stage has a single engine that will ignite before the separation of the second stage, helping to push it away safely. It will burn until the 8 minutes and 46 seconds mark of the flight, and at that point the Soyuz spacecraft will separate from the third stage, having arrived at its preliminary orbit. And again, back live uh, with the view of uh, the launch pad at the Baikonur Cosmodrome, the gantry arms that are enveloping uh, the Soyuz booster. They will uh, spread or retract uh, to their uh, position uh, perpendicular to the uh, rocket itself a few minutes from now as we uh, continue the countdown flawlessly approaching the T-minus 42-minute mark. Meanwhile, the International Space Station is flying uh, over the southern uh, Pacific Ocean, about to cross uh, the southern coast of South America at an altitude of 262 statute miles, about to begin a southwest and northeasterly track that will carry it across the west coast of Africa a short time from now. No problems being reported as the countdown proceeds smoothly uh, from those engineers of the blockhouse in Baikonur. Atop that booster, strapped into their seats in the descent module of the Soyuz, which is the center section of the three-section Soyuz capsule, are NASA's Laurel O'Hara and from Roscosmos, Oleg Kononenko and Nikolai Chub. The three sections of the Soyuz spacecraft are familiar to those who have watched previous missions to the International Space Station. Here's a look at this workhorse Russian vehicle. The whole Soyuz spacecraft is 24 and a half feet long with an overall volume of 301 cubic feet and comprised of three modules. The descent module, situated in the middle of the Soyuz vehicle, contains customized seats for the crew members during launch, entry, and landing, and contains all the controls and displays necessary for the flight. It also houses life support systems, batteries for the re-entry and landing, and the parachute and soft landing rocket engines that slow the Soyuz just before touchdown as the spacecraft lands in Kazakhstan. There are eight hydrogen peroxide thrusters located on the module, which are used to control the spacecraft's orientation or attitude during the descent until parachute deployment. The descent module also contains a guidance navigation and control system used to maneuver the vehicle during the descent phase of the mission. This descent module is 7.3 feet long with a diameter of 7.1 feet and a habitable volume of 124 cubic feet. It is the only portion of the Soyuz that survives the return to Earth. The orbital module at the top is 9.8 feet long. It connects to the descent module via pressurized hatch. This is where the crew has a small amount of room to move around following launch during the flight to the space station. It has a docking mechanism, hatch, and rendezvous antennas located at the front end. The docking mechanism is used to dock with the space station, and the hatch allows entry into the orbiting complex. The rendezvous antennas are used by the automated docking system, which uses radar, to maneuver toward the station for docking. There is also a forward-looking window in the module that the crew can use to take manual measurements of distance and closing speed with a laser rangefinder in the event of failure of the rendezvous radar system. The propulsion module houses the oxygen storage tanks, the main engine, and the attitude control thrusters, avionics, and communication and control equipment. 
The propulsion portion of this module handles all orbital maneuvers, including those needed for the rendezvous with the space station and the deorbit burn at the end of the spacecraft's mission. Before they are deployed, the two solar arrays are folded against the body of the propulsion module, which, along with the orbital module, separates from the descent module after the deorbit burn. The solar panels span almost 35 feet. The entire spacecraft serves not only as a crew transport vehicle to and from the space station, but also as an emergency return vehicle in the unlikely event the crew needs to leave the station unexpectedly. And you'll be seeing uh, and hearing a lot more about uh, the Soyuz spacecraft on September 27th when we are here all night in the deep overnight to provide uh, coverage of the departure of Frank Rubio, Sergei Prokopiev, and Dmitry Patelin from the International Space Station to wrap up their 371-day mission. We're also uh, just a few minutes away from receiving from Baikonur a uh, video B-roll feed of all of the crew's activities uh, that led up to their boarding uh, the Soyuz spacecraft a couple of hours ago. We'll be bringing that to you as soon as that feed uh, comes in from Baikonur just a couple of minutes or so from now. The uh, ride to orbit for O'Hara, Kononenko, and Chubb will take about 8 minutes and 45 seconds. That's the point at which uh, we'll have third stage shutdown of the Soyuz booster and spacecraft separation, placing the Soyuz in its initial orbital uh, plane. The uh, Solar arrays and navigational antennas will deploy right after spacecraft separation, and uh, the chase will be on for the Soyuz to catch up to the International Space Station. Because the orbital mechanics and this launch date were specifically selected for a two-orbit, three-hour-plus rendezvous for O'Hara, Kononenko, and Chubb, uh, they will uh, begin uh, the automated process for rendezvous uh, maneuvers to raise the altitude of the Soyuz to match that of the International Space Station and to begin closing the gap between the Soyuz and the station uh, as rapidly as possible. The first uh, rendezvous burn, called a DV-1 burn or Delta Velocity 1 burn of about 4.74 meters per second, is scheduled some 39 minutes after launch, about 10 minutes before what is called automated rendezvous operations begin. The uh, Soyuz will rapidly uh, begin to close the gap between itself and the International Space Station and uh, later this afternoon will arrive in the vicinity of the space station itself conducting a fly around of the station to precisely align itself with the Rosviet module on the earth facing side of the Russian segment of the complex. After a brief uh, moment or two for station keeping to permit uh, Russian flight controllers to assess uh, the angular alignment of the Soyuz forward docking probe with the Rosviet module, uh, the uh, command will be given to begin final approach. That will uh, be a very slow glacial approach of about one-tenth of a meter per second in its final phase, allowing the Soyuz uh, to dock with the station's Rosviet module at 1.56 p.m. Central Time, 2.56 p.m. Eastern Time. Once the docking is completed and uh, the uh, period of relative motion between the two vehicles at the docking interface has dampened out, the uh, forward docking probe will retract and basically pull uh, the two vehicles flush against one another, the Soyuz and the station, uh, permitting uh, hooks to close uh, to form a hard mate uh, between the Soyuz and the station. Leak checks will be performed on both sides of the docking interface before the hatches are open later this afternoon, and O'Hara, Kononenko, and Chubb Chub will float into uh, the International Space Station to begin their stay on board the complex. And again, uh, we are standing by for uh, the roll of uh, video from uh, this morning's crew activities down in Baikonur uh, that began uh, several hours ago. The gantry arms that you see uh, buttressed up against the side of the Soyuz rocket out on uh, Site 31, Launch Pad 6, will begin to spread a short time from now as the countdown has now reached uh, the 35 minute 17 second mark. It's a beautiful night down in Baikonur, about 68 degrees Fahrenheit, clear skies. You couldn't ask for more as O'Hara, Kononenko, and Chub in a spacecraft 
that carries the call sign of Antares. The MS-24 spacecraft begins uh, its trip a short time from now, within the next 35 minutes, to the International Space Station. And here is uh, the uh, video of this morning's activities uh, down in Baikonur. The uh, traditional uh, day began for the crew members as they were awakened at the Cosmonaut Hotel crew quarters in Baikonur. To uh, traditional farewell music, the crew departed the hotel and boarded uh, a bus for their 40-minute ride to the integration and suit-up facility at Building 254 inside the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Good luck, guys. Behind uh, the three prime crew members are the backup crew, NASA's Tracy Dyson and Roscosmos's Alexei Ovchinin. Good luck. Black guys, we love you. Wave your hands. Again, you're looking at uh, video that was recorded several hours ago, now being fed to us from Baikonur, as uh, the three crew members, O'Hara, Kononenko, and Chub, boarded their bus for their 40-minute ride out uh, Good luck. to Building 254, the integration building and suit-up facility inside the Baikonur Cosmodrome. After arriving at the integration building, each crew member underwent final medical exams and suited up in their Sokol launch and entry suits. One by one, uh, the crew members moved uh, to a mock-up of a Soyuz spacecraft seat, allowing technicians to conduct pressure checks to ensure that their suits were free of any leaks. All of these procedures uh, were rehearsed uh, several days ago during a series of uh, so-called Soyuz fit checks that the crew underwent uh, during their final pre-launch training activities at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. But today, it was the real McCoy as the three crew members suited up for launch that is now just 30 minutes and 45 seconds away. Family members and invited guests looked on across a protective pane of glass maintaining quarantine as the suit-up was completed about five hours prior to launch. And one by one, the crew exchanged final remarks uh, with their family members. And uh, lastly, with uh, senior NASA and Roscosmos managers who uh, provided a final status on vehicle preparations, all the while expressing good luck to the crew before they departed for the launch pad.
Okay, so I was allowed to say two words. Yesterday we had two launches of our shows. We know that, uh, you know, three is the magic number. So I'm sure everything will be fine. And from all uh, the uh, two from all the actors of um, our theater, I would like to wish you uh, so that everything is nominal in your ascent to the orbit, also that I uh, hope that the docking uh, will be successful and uh, you will uh, do everything that you are required. And uh, uh, so you, we will be on the ground here uh, in our uh, creative, artistic weightlessness, and you will be up there in space. Uh, Those so good remarks luck, coming uh, from a Moscow theater group, part of the invited guests for today's launch. That's all I wanted to say. I hope uh, that you will be able also to see our performance, our play, and I hope everything will be well. Thank you so much. This is the O'Hara family, uh, accompanied uh, by astronaut Mark Vandehei, family escort uh, for this trip. I can only repeat once again, uh, have a good flight in the quiescent space. So I'm, I will meet you on the ground, hopefully, when you come back, and good luck, guys. Good luck, guys. Konyenko and Chub uh, embarking today on a one-year mission to the International Space Station for Laurel O'Hara's six months on the complex. I hope you had a good night's sleep, everyone. Yes, uh, we had a good night's sleep. Guys, it's not a very easy task that you have. Nikolai, it is your first flight that I know, I'm sure that you will do everything uh, fine and everything will be as it should be. And uh, please send our warmest regards to the crew that is on the station together with our American colleagues. We're all very proud of you. We know you've worked hard uh, to get to this point. We look forward to seeing uh, how you work on orbit. Um, I wish the capsule was big enough for all of us to go with you. Uh, but it's a little small for that, but our hearts will be with you. We'll be watching and uh, we'll be here when you get back. Thank you. Thank you so much. I wish you good flight and good luck, of course. Uh, have a good uh, flight, uh, docking, and uh, also nominal work on the station, and of course, good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys.
And a final opportunity uh, for the crew uh, to say goodbye to their loved ones uh, before heading uh, out of the integration building toward the launch pad. The uh, crew members uh, now seen uh, leaving the Site 254 integration building. This uh, enabled Kononenko, the Soyuz commander, to report that he and his crewmates were ready to proceed to the launch pad. The Soyuz crew is ready for uh, the mission. Goodbye, everyone. boarded uh, the bus at the uh, 254 integration building at about 7 a.m. Central Time uh, to begin uh, what amounted to about a one-hour trip out to Launch Site 31 and their rocket. And uh, there you see uh, the buses uh, arriving at the pad. Uh, the crew, uh, Kononenko, Chub, and O'Hara, you'll see in a moment, climbing a few stairs to wave goodbye to well-wishers, and then entering the elevator for the ride to the top of the Soyuz rocket to board their spacecraft, which they've now been aboard for the past several hours. Accompanied by their respective uh, senior managers, uh, Kononenko, uh, along with Yuri uh, Borisov, the head of Roscosmos, Chub, uh, and there you see Ken Bowersox of NASA and Joel Montalbano, the ISS program manager. Bowersox, the associate administrator for human spaceflight for NASA, accompanying Laurel O'Hara to the stairs.
and uh, you see uh, the venting uh, of uh, liquid oxygen from the uh, Soyuz 2.1A booster. The crew now has been aboard uh, the spacecraft uh, for the past uh, several hours. The countdown now inside the T-minus 20-minute mark. We're back now with a live view of the Soyuz MS-24 on the pad at Baikonur. Liftoff is scheduled for 10.44 and 35 seconds a.m. Central Time, 8.44 p.m. in Baikonur. Strapped into their seats in the descent module of the Soyuz, as we have mentioned uh, frequently during our broadcast, are NASA's Laurel O'Hara, along with Oleg Kononenko and Nikolai Chub of Roscosmos. And as mentioned earlier, Kononenko, as Soyuz commander, is in the center seat of the MS-24. Chub is to his left. O'Hara is seated to his right. At the time of launch, uh, the International Space Station will be flying over southwestern Kazakhstan at an altitude of about 262 statute miles. The station will actually pass over the Cosmodrome 23 seconds after Soyuz lifts off and will leapfrog past the Soyuz as Kononenko, Chub, and O'Hara climb to their preliminary orbit. Eight minutes and 45 seconds after launch, the third stage engine of the Soyuz booster will shut down and the Soyuz will separate from its launch vehicle in its preliminary orbit, deploying its solar arrays and navigational antennas. At that point, the three crew members will trail the space station by 1,145 miles. The chase will be on, resulting in docking of the MS-24 spacecraft to the Rosviet module of the International Space Station at 1.56 p.m. Central Time today. As you can see, uh, the gantry arms around the Soyuz spacecraft uh, and the booster have spread. The vehicle is now on autonomous power. At the launch site in the Central Asian Desert, NASA officials are on hand to watch the beginning of the journey for Laurel O'Hara, Ali Kononenko, and Nikolai Chub. Leading the NASA delegation today is NASA's Associate Administrator for Human Spaceflight, Ken Bowersox, ISS Program Manager, Joel Montalbano, Johnson Space Center Deputy Director, Steve Kerner, Norm Knight, Johnson's Director of Flight Operations, and the Chief Astronaut for NASA, Joe Acaba. And with them is NASA Public Affairs Officer, Leah Cheshire, who filed this report a short time ago. Hi, Rob. We're here at the launch viewing site at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in the Kazakh Desert. We are surrounded by miles of sandy soil and brush with our focus on Soyuz MS-24 perched on Pad 31, just about two miles away from us. Now, this evening, we're in the low 60-degree Fahrenheit range. That continues to drop, but we're looking up to clear skies for our crew tonight. Now, in contrast, the NASA delegation on the Earth Cosmos Charter received a very windy welcome when we arrived in Baikonur on Monday, and we saw a very chilly but by the book rocket rollout on Tuesday at 7.30 a.m. local time. And since we've been here, we've also seen many of the residents who call this desert home, including camels, cows, and horses. The crew's rigorous training has led to this moment, and they are ready inside the capsule with this being the first space flight for Laurel O'Hara and Nikolai Chub, and the fifth for Oleg Kononenko. O'Hara's family is here cheering for all for her maiden voyage, and of course, so are we. Now we're looking forward to liftoff and seeing Soyuz rise on the skyline and light up the night. And with that, I'll send it back to you, Rob. Thank you, Leah. The countdown uh, is approaching the T-minus 15-minute mark. Everything is in great shape. The vehicle fully fueled. It is on autonomous power at this hour. You're going to be hearing a, a number of rapid-fire activities over the course of the next few minutes. The uh, one-minute uh, to command key to start uh, is scheduled at the T-minus eight-minute mark. 
Preparations will be transitioning to an automated mode, which is equivalent to a ground launch sequence at the T-minus seven minute mark. Again, you're hearing music piped uh, up to the crew aboard uh, the Soyuz spacecraft. And ascend on the right. The formats have been selected. Copy. It's a little bit difficult to perceive, but uh, buttressed up against the side of the Soyuz 2.1A rocket uh, are two uh, umbilical towers that have provided uh, all of the uh, consumables uh, for the spacecraft uh, throughout the course of the countdown preparations. The first of those two umbilicals will retract at about the T minus 31 second mark. The second of the two umbilicals you'll see uh, when we get there, uh, we'll retract at about the T minus 12 second mark or so. That will initiate the engine sequence start. The engines will come up uh, to full thrust, and then uh, there'll be full ignition of the spacecraft's first stage engines, and the hold down posts will be uh, retracted, and the Soyuz rocket will be on its way. Again, it's about an eight minute, 45 second ride to orbit. Uh, for third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation, the solar arrays and navigational antennas will deploy. The Soyuz will be about 1145 miles behind the International Space Station and will begin the automated rendezvous sequence uh, just a few minutes after uh, reaching its preliminary orbit with a uh, delta velocity burn just 39 minutes after launch. That will uh, raise uh, the orbit of the Soyuz and uh, fine-tune its path to the station, initiating those uh, automated rendezvous operations. Because this is a fast-track two-orbit rendezvous for the Soyuz, uh, there won't be as many rendezvous burns required because the Soyuz will be uh, moving into the exact plane of the station's orbit, the corridor. You can liken it uh, to a car uh, moving on uh, from an exit ramp uh, to a freeway and getting into the right lane uh, to provide the shortest distance between uh, itself and its destination. Again, uh, the launch is precisely timed uh, for the moment when the Earth's rotation will place the Baikonur Cosmodrome in the plane of the orbit of the International Space Station. On board uh, the station itself, uh, the Expedition 69 crew, led by uh, Commander Sergei Prokopiev, the multinational crew that's on board the station, will be eagerly awaiting the arrival of their new crewmates later today, with docking scheduled at 1.56 p.m. Central Time. Uh, assuming uh, everything goes as planned, the hatches are scheduled to be opened around 4.30 p.m. Central Time this afternoon to allow O'Hara, Kononenko, and Chub to enter their home, which for Kononenko and Chub will be about a year's worth of uh, stay on board the station. Laurel O'Hara will uh, be spending six months on the international outpost. Here in uh, Mission Control in Houston, uh, Flight Director uh, Chris Dobbins uh, polled uh, his team of flight controllers a short time ago. Everything is in readiness uh, for uh, the launch of Soyuz. Uh, from a station perspective, uh, you can see uh, 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 Dobbins is in the middle of this trio of flight controllers that you see. To his left is Flight Director Ronak Dave, and to Dobbins' right is veteran astronaut Jessica Meir. Antares, this is uh, five three. Lunch minus five minutes. Close helmet visors. Copy closing helmet visors. The interpreter talking to Soyuz Commander Oleg Kononenko in the descent module of the Soyuz MS-24 spacecraft. 
as we are now inside 10 minutes until launch. Inaudible. Copy, KSS is ready. We see Antares 3 on camera 2. Copy. This is uh, traditional uh, for the uh, technicians at the blockhouse in Baikonur to uplink uh, music of their choice to the crew members in the final hour before a countdown. It's basically a method of relaxing the crew members and making them feel at home before they begin their journey into space. For uh, a quick look at the milestones en route to orbit, uh, first stage separation is expected at the 1 minute 58 second mark into the flight followed uh, at 2 minutes and 34 seconds by the jettisoning of the launch shroud that envelops uh, the uh, Soyuz capsule itself. Second stage shutdown is scheduled at 4 minutes 37 seconds after launch, followed 11 seconds later by second stage separation. The third stage lower skirt jettisoning is at the 4 minute 56 second mark, and third stage shutdown is at 8 minutes 46 seconds. That is the new computation for that followed just three seconds later by third stage separation. Seconds after that, the solar rays and navigational antennas will uh, begin to be deployed, and uh, the Soyuz spacecraft uh, will begin uh, in earnest its chase to catch up to the International Space Station. T-minus seven minutes, 40 seconds until launch. We're about to have uh, an engineer at the blockhouse in Baikonur turn a key that transitions the countdown to an automatic mode, Antares, basically a ground launch sequencer three, for the remainder L of the countdown. One. Minutes, uh, command algorithms are on board. We'll be broadcasting all the se launch sequences to the entity. Copy. Vehicle is nominal. We are ready to proceed. Copy. Antares, we are seeing you on camera one. Copy. Ali Kononenko, the Soyuz commander, reporting uh, that the vehicle is ready for launch, the crew ready for launch, as we are at the T minus six hour, 35 minute, six minute, 35 second mark in the countdown. Again, at the time of launch, the International Space Station will be over southwestern Kazakhstan at an altitude of 262 statute miles and will pass directly over the Cosmodrome and the launch site 23 seconds after liftoff. Now a view of the crew inside uh, the MS-24. At the top of your screen, Nikolai Chub, board engineer number one. There's Oleg Kononenko at the bottom of your screen, about to embark on the fifth flight of his career. countdown has gone by the book. The vehicle was fueled several hours ago. The crew boarded the vehicle at the T-minus two hour 45 minute mark and now is poised to lift off just five minutes from now. Продувка 30 
Ground telemetry active. Strip chart recorders and ground telemetry now activated. Nitrogen purge. The fuel lines and other elements of the rocket engines now being purged with nitrogen to fireproof them by removing vapors of fuel and oxidizer. Inside four minutes until liftoff. We're about a minute or so away from uh, the pressurization of the fuel and oxidizer tanks to optimize fuel flow and provide additional structural rigidity to the launch vehicle out on pad six, site 31 of the Baikonur Cosmodrome. We have now hit the T minus three and a half minute mark until launch. T minus three minutes and counting. All systems are go. The range is clear at Baikonur. The uh, key to drainage has uh, been conducted. This uh, key to drainage uh, enables the valves through which evaporated oxygen escapes from the fuel tanks into the atmosphere are closed beginning uh, basically a drain back of fuel back into the tanks and the valves providing liquid oxygen to replenish any lost by a boil off in the final minutes of the countdown. Tank repress in progress. Tank pressurization underway. T minus two minutes and counting. The uh, ground propellant feed now has been terminated to the vehicle. The Soyuz on internal power. Coming up on T minus one minute. The first umbilical tower again will retract at the T minus 35 minus second mark. Minute. Vehicle on internal power. Copy. There goes the first umbilical retraction. The second umbilical will retract in just a few seconds to initiate engine start sequence. T minus 20 seconds. We have engine sequence start. We have engine ignition. Second tower separation. Three. Two, one, bombs at flight speed and liftoff. 
O'Hara, Kononyenko, and Chu begin a short duration journey for a long duration mission on the International Space Station. All vehicle parameters are normal. 23 seconds into the flight. Good roll pitch and yaw program. Engine performance on the first stage nominal. L plus 30 seconds. Flight is nominal. 40 seconds into the flight. Structural parameters are normal. Engine parameters reported from the blockhouse in Baikonur all to be within limits and normal. One minute, five seconds into the flight. All PCR nominal. All the uh, vehicle parameters are normal. Good reports coming in from the blockhouse in Baikonur. The vehicle arcing out to the northeast from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Ninety seconds into the flight. L plus ninety seconds. First Good engine performance engine being reported. Eighteen four six zero eight. See off nominal pressure in case of fifteen hundred. Coming up on uh, first stage shutdown, and we have first stage separation. Launch tower jettison reported. Everything in good shape. First stage separation. Two minutes, twelve seconds into the flight. Kesho is back to nominal nine eight zero. Copy. The vehicle now uh, operating on its second stage engines. All parameters are normal, good structural uh, performance by the vehicle. Launch shroud jettison now reported. In this view now from a camera on the upper stage of the Soyuz 2.1A booster. Two minutes, 50 seconds into the flight. A little over uh, six minutes of powered flight remaining. Launch vehicle is nominal. Copy. Soyuz is nominal. The crew is feeling well. Koninenko reports the crew is feeling well. Three minutes. 15 seconds into the flight. Perfect engine performance reported. Good structural parameters on the vehicle. L plus 200 seconds. Second stage engine operating nominally. Second stage engine is functioning by the book. The Soyuz heading for its precise keyhole in space. Flight is normal. Now four minutes into the flight, everything going perfectly. O'Hara, Kononenko, and Shub heading for their preliminary orbit and the chase to track down and dock to the International Space Station. L plus 250 seconds. Four minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Roll pitch, all normal. Engine performance is normal as well. L plus 270 seconds. Standing by for GECA to command. Copy. Coming up on second stage shutdown. And we have second stage shutdown. Second stage separation confirmed. Copy. Second stage separation confirmed.
Okay. That's the skirt for the third stage you saw being jettisoned. Five minutes, 15 seconds into the flight, about three and a half minutes of powered flight remaining. The Soyuz now being propelled on the power of its third stage engine. Copy. Soyuz is nominal. Crew is feeling well. Copy. Kononenko continuing to report uh, that the crew is feeling well. Everything normal on board. Five minutes, 45 seconds into the flight. Good third stage performance. L plus 350 seconds. Flight is nominal. Copy. We've just passed the six minute mark into the flight. Good reports continuing to come in. Control of uh, the Soyuz spacecraft after it separates from the third stage will transfer to the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow. Six minutes, 25 seconds into the flight. Stage three engine operating nominally. Copy. Six minutes, 45 seconds into the flight, two minutes of powered flight Vehicle remaining. Stabilization is steady. Copy. Good, stable structural performance by the vehicle. L plus 430 seconds. Stage three engine operating nominally. Seven minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Nothing but good reports coming in. We're about a minute and a half away from a third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation. L plus 460 seconds. Launch vehicle structural parameters are nominal. Seven minutes, okay. 55 seconds into the flight. Everything is going perfectly so far. Less than a minute to go before third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation. L plus 490 seconds. Stabilization is steady. Eight minutes, 20 seconds into the flight, about 30 seconds of powered flight remaining. L plus 500 seconds. Flight is nominal. Right after third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation, we'll be standing by for the deployment of the solar arrays and navigational antennas on the Soyuz. L plus 520 seconds. Standing by now for third stage shutdown. Standing by for GK3. And we have third stage shutdown and third stage third separation. Stage engine cutoff confirmed. Separation confirmed. And that is, we're handing you over to MCC Moscow. And uh, the program uh, has been activated, and the solar arrays and navigational antennas are now confirmed to have been deployed. A perfect ride to orbit for Laurel O'Hara, Ali Kononenko, and Nikolai Chub. Antares, Moscow. Antares, Moscow. The Soyuz uh, being inserted into a perfect preliminary orbit and as it begins Moscow. its chase to catch up to and dock to the International Space Station later this afternoon. At the time of third Moscow, stage shutdown, the Soyuz Mariupol. trailed the station by about 1,145 statute miles. Execute per page 35. Copy.
Uh, RTU closed, SP1 and 2 are open, uh, checking SM. Copy. Start AKG uh, compartment check algorithm. Copy. Ready to start. Compartment check algorithm started. Copy. Copy per page 36. Aboard uh, the Soyuz MS-24, which carries the call sign of Antares, Ali Kononenko, Nikolai Chub, and Laurel O'Hara are beginning uh, systems checks as they uh, prepare for the first of their rendezvous burns, the DV-1 or Delta Velocity-1 burn that is scheduled about 28 minutes from now. Measurement 1 at 18.55, pressure in SA-806. Pressure in orbital module 721. Instrumentation compartment 885. Copy next measurement in five minutes. Copy. OSK uh, started course two. This view now from uh, the control panel inside uh, the Soyuz MS 24. Alek Kononenko reporting that the crew is feeling great following its on-time launch and its uneventful ascent into its preliminary orbit. Long test started. Copy. Moscow, I am ready to report for page 37. For screen 03, parameters to crew on board uh, the Soyuz spacecraft uh, providing uh, systems uh, parameters and uh, systems information to the uh, Russian flight controllers that you see there in this uh, balcony view from a camera inside uh, the Russian Mission Control Center in the town of Koryov outside of Moscow. Over the course of uh, the next hour or so, uh, the crew will be testing uh, its CORE's automated rendezvous system. That's uh, the system uh, that will hey, automatically Alex, guide Alex, the Soyuz uh, through Alex, all of the docking parameters Alex, and uh, providing uh, and the range Alex, between Alex, itself Alex, and the International Alex, Space Alex, Station and the rate of closure. Everything is going well. All systems have deployed. Per the book, no. Uh, reports on any deviations, so things are going well, and I wish you all the best. Thank you, Vladimir Alexeyevich. Once again, uh, the Soyuz lifted off on time after a flawless countdown at uh, 10.44 and 35 seconds a.m. Central Time, 11.44 a.m. Eastern Time, 8.44 p.m. at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. All of the uh, ascent events ticked off in perfect shape through uh, the activation of uh, all of the engines. The, all three stages of the Soyuz performed as advertised, uh, depositing the Soyuz into a perfect preliminary orbit from which now they uh, will begin uh, the short
to orbit three-hour rendezvous to reach the International Space Station and a docking with the Rosviet module of the complex at 1.56 p.m. Central Time this afternoon. There's no calm. Okay, Moscow ISS on Paris 2. Go ahead. Pressure in the S805 Delta negative 1. Bio pressure 821 Delta is negative 1. Pressure in the assembly compartment 8. Uh, uh, 104 and Delta negative 1. We are on stage four. I cannot currently monitor the attitude. Copy. Antares, we have some information for you. The um, propellant parameter is not, it says 216, and it's not accurate. We have 816. We confirm it is not quite accurate. Okay, copy. This is Mission Control Houston. As uh, the uh, Soyuz MS-24 crew, led by uh, Soyuz Commander Oleg Kononenko, who now is in his fifth flight into space, along with his first-time flyer crewmates, Nikolai Chub of Roscosmos and NASA's Laurel O'Hara, as they continue uh, to check out uh, spacecraft systems in the early minutes of their ride uh, into space, having launched just about 17 minutes ago from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. The uh, Soyuz spacecraft is in excellent shape. Okay, All of its solar arrays and uh, navigational antennas having been deployed as planned right after third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation. So with that, uh, the beginning of automated rendezvous operations will begin in about uh, 30 minutes or so. A series of rendezvous burns that will carry uh, the Soyuz over the next two orbits into the neighborhood of the International Space Station where it will close the gap slowly but surely, do a fly around of the station to align itself to the Rosviet module of the International Space Station and a docking at 1.56 p.m. Central Time this afternoon. For that, uh, we will be back on the air at 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern Time with rendezvous and docking coverage as the next trio of residents for the International Space Station uh, begins its trek to the complex and arrival at the International Space Station later today. So we'll be back with you in just a few hours for rendezvous and docking. In the meantime, we'll wrap it up for now. This is Mission Control Houston.